in our mobile GIS. What's the new normal? Windows, Android, iOS, open source. My name is Matt Loby and I will be your event manager. GPS World would like to thank our platinum sponsor, Hemisphere GPS, for making this webinar possible. Thanks, Matt. Hey, this is Eric Gackstetter. I appreciate uh, you coming out and listening to our webinar today. I've got with me uh, Craig Greenwald, um, who's technical director at GeoMobile Innovations. Actually, Craig and I worked together uh, a number of years ago, more than a decade ago, I think, um, maybe even 15 years or so. But um, we started working on together on some GPS and, and GIS projects back in the in the late 90s, and and since then, Craig has uh, uh, got quite quite a bit of experience in mobile GIS. He's worked with the ESRI ArcPad team and for quite a few years, and and now he's uh, he's knee deep in in uh, mobile GIS type apps, app development, that sort of thing. So, hey, Craig, I appreciate you having here today. Yeah, thanks, Eric. I appreciate the opportunity. So what we're going to talk about today is, uh, you, you know, you may notice that the, the presentation title is a, bit, a little bit different uh, than, what I guess, what was advertised. Um, you know, I, what was mentioned in the uh, in, in the marketing stuff was, you know, what's the new normal, Windows, Android, iOS, or open source, and certainly we're going to touch on those, but we're going to go outside of those boundaries a bit, too. It's been a few years since the iPhone was introduced, and that sort of changed the device landscape and, and smartphone adoption rates are just been tremendous There's just so many smartphones available and you know with different operating systems and, and different manufacturers and, and that sort of thing so we're going to talk about that that sort of mobile device landscape a bit um, and then how that affects the, the mobile GIS software landscape too because once you have different operating systems you know you talk about iOS or Android or, or Windows um, that sort of changes the software development environment <clears throat> and, and you know not, not all companies are able to develop software for all these different platforms and so that certainly has some effect on what product availability is. Uh, then we'll touch on sensors a bit, you know, a GPS being a primary one, um, digital photos, laser range finders, accelerometers, other kinds of kind of really cool sensor technology. You know, I've been a, a big, a big uh, I guess, a supporter or uh, of, of different of sensor integration or sensor fusion is, is what I tend to refer to it as. But you know, it's not just about you know one technology like GPS. Um, you know, in the future, that mobile devices are going to have many, many different sensors uh, in one platform that will sort of all work together uh, to accomplish or, or be able to provide a solution. And so, I want to talk about that a little bit, and then we'll kind of look at some different technology trends uh, scattered in the presentation and then uh, got a pretty neat mobile GIS example that, that Craig built up. Um, really inexpensive sort of photo digital photo integration with GPS and, and mapping technology. So, um, And then it, towards the end we'll get to some audience Q&A. Um, I'll try to get to some live questions here if we have time and, and address those. It's a great opportunity to ask you know, Craig, he's a He's a he's a, a, a mobile jazz software developer who's you know knee deep in this stuff, and so any questions you have, he's well, he's the guy to ask on this sort of thing. So I guess well, the, the first the question is, is how do we define mobile GIS and, and you know really it's an extension of jazz technology from the office workstation into the field and, and so the pieces are you know you have this mobile GIS software and and, uh, and application um, and, and mobile GIS software can be run on any, any kind of mobile device and like I said these really have exploded in the past few years you know from smart Phones to handheld PDAs to tablet PCs to notebook computers. There's just a, a ton of mobile devices out there, and, and it seems like prices on these things have just dropped sort of dramatically over the past couple of years. And you look at, for just take the example of tablet computers, 
you know, before the iPad came out, you know, a typical tablet computer for mobile GIS was in the thousands of dollars, you know, in, in as much as $5,000 for a, a rugged tablet, a ruggedized tablet. And, and the, the iPad sort of woke the market up to this sort of lower end, um, you know, less than a thousand dollar tablet computer with some pretty strong capabilities, and so and it has forced other manufacturers um, to introduce products, not just iOS based, but also Windows based and even Android based, um, that are that are in the same sort of price point. And, and in fact, I, you know, I just bought my wife like a Kindle, Amazon Kindle Fire <clears throat> for Christmas last year for two hundred bucks. You know, she can do web browsing and email and all that sort of thing. So it's pretty amazing over the last couple of years the sort of transformation in the mobile device market. And then you know, we'll talk about sensors a bit. Um, um, you know, within mobile GIS, most of the time you're going to use some sort of sensor. It's not just a matter of using heads-up display, although that can be a part of it. But you know, sensors, like GPS, of course, is a big one. Digital cameras, um, video, um, laser range finders, another sensor, that sort of thing. <clears throat> and then mobile GIS also typically uses uh, onboard uh, or cloud-based. GIS data in the background as a reference. Doesn't, you don't have to have that, but uh, boy, more and more these days, you know, it's nice to have an aerial photo in the background or some kind of topo map, uh, vector data, road data, parcel data, that sort of thing, or, or even, you know, even more maybe access to the cloud where there's all kinds of different layers you can you can access it all. This next slide is, and I've used this one last year. If you, if you hit my webinar probably a year ago or so, I, I did this uh, in June, I think. But I, this is kind of a neat uh, slide that uh, I mined from uh, this gentleman at the University of, of Hungary. Um, but I think it, I like it because it really spells out um, very clearly sort of the infrastructure and the, or I guess the whole, paints the whole picture of mobile GIS. You know, start at the bottom, you know, the wireless network isn't, isn't required. It's an optional thing, so you can be connected or not connected. Um, but then, you know, the mobile device is sort of the, the basis of, or the foundation of mobile GIS. And then you go up to the mobile operating system. Step above that is the mobile GIS software. You know, it could be something like uh, ArcPad or or uh, any other mobile GIS piece of software. And then above that is <clears throat> any kind of access to geospatial data, um, sensor data, GPS positioning is one. And on top of that is the is the custom apps, the stuff that the, the, the software that sort of polishes it all off and makes it user friendly and accomplish the task that it's designed for. So I'm going to refer to this diagram. Uh, throughout the uh, presentation today. We'll just sort of work through these. And whereas last year when I when I did a similar webinar to this, I sort of started at the top and worked my way down on this uh, illustration. Now I'm gonna so I'm gonna start at the mobile device layer, second from the bottom, and then and then move our way up and discuss each one as we go along there. So mobile device landscape. Um, you know, like I said, you know, there's a tremendous number of mobile devices that have really um, proliferated over the past couple of years. Uh, smartphones are a big one. I mean, you look at the adoption rate of smartphones and handhelds and tablets and even notebooks, and it's interesting to look, and I don't have the specific numbers in front of me, but I think all these devices certainly outsell personal computers, in, 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 in fact, or desktop computers. In fact, I, you know, I don't remember the last time I bought a desktop computer. I, I'm all either notebook-based or, uh, or tablet-based or, or using my smartphone, um, and, and, and I've been using my smartphone for more and more of those types of applications. In fact, you can you can say that for sure that smartphones have sort of eliminated the need for the old compact iPad, you know, digital PDA. Um, you know, those were hot probably 10 years ago or so. But the smartphone has got enough capability now that um, you can do all the functionality of a, of a handheld PDA on a smartphone. 
but there's some other trends there too you know the industrial PDAs have sort of come on strong over the last couple of years and so we'll, we'll talk we'll talk about that <clears throat> and and um, even even though that the, the smart so, smartphones have have seemed to steal the show um, smartphone I think adoption and, and maybe Craig you can comment on that so it isn't, isn't really mainstream yet um, you really don't have good offline support in my opinion um, and I don't know if there's a resource sharing issue or you know because I don't know if some folks say it's either a phone or a mobile device for data capture but it's sort of hard to do both because you know it's sort of like having a, a GPS navigator in your car and one on your phone um, you know the one on your phone if you want to use your phone how can you use it for GPS navigating that's sort of a resource sharing thing I don't know Craig what do you think about that yeah I think that, that I think um are not sure yet, you know, in the early stages. You know, if you think about something like Windows Mobile, it's been around, you know, it, its basis, Windows CE, has been around for a long time now, 15 years or so, and it's been developed in, you know, layer upon layer upon layer, whereas these other operating systems, you know, Windows Phone is, is new, iOS is relatively new, and um, Android is, you know, relatively new, only in, in a few iterations, and they don't yet have the kind of mature um, internal database support, um, some of the graphic support, the you know, some of the file I/O is is not really um, up to par. It's moving in that direction now, but it's been a challenge up until now in the latest um, incarnations of these operating systems to really develop a, a robust offline storage and cache type of application. And it seems to me also that in, in, you know enterprises, whether it's public or private, haven't really. You aren't to the point yet where they're issuing smartphones as a data collection device, mobile GIS device. It's sort of, hey, if you've got a smartphone that you already own, your personal one, maybe we can do something with it. But it just seems to be that things are stalling there somehow, and and that that I don't know, and I don't know what's I don't know what's the trigger going to be that really is a huge push towards that. Um, but there's you know, um, stalling there for some reason. Yeah, you know, it, it reminds me of the early days of um, Windows CE and Pocket PC when it first came out. There was a huge demand um, from users for a Palm. When, this is when I was working on the ArcPad team. It, there was a huge demand for a Palm-based solution because Palm was the dominant OS at the time. And um, you know, over time, the, the demand kind of was, was always there, but very quickly, Windows Mobile started to, or Windows CE started to take over the market share that Palm once dominated. And as, as that started to gradually erode, the demand for Palm started to erode as well. And it was the same, it was that kind of same initial thing of, hey, I have a Palm device, why can't I, you know, it's already been issued to me, why can't I use this to run your software? I think now we have kind of an opposite situation where, you know, people are asking for this and you can't say, well, hey, the market share is going away. It's actually, the, you know, the reverse where Windows is losing its market share, Windows Mobile is losing its market share, and there's a huge gain in these other operating systems. So now it's time for software companies to really take a look at these and, you know, and, and, and realize they're not going away. They're not going to be dominated by something else. So you think maybe the software companies have, have sort of stood back a little bit because they're not sure which direction the, the technology was going to go and didn't want to invest too much in a certain area only to have it go away like, like Palm OS did? Yeah, I mean, that's certainly, and we're a small company, that's certainly been a part of it for us, is that, you know, limited resources. But even larger companies, I think, when, you know, to, to shift developers off of, uh, you know, off of what they've gained all their, their background and knowledge on and have to make a significant shift to invest in a new technology is pretty expensive. And so I think companies have just been not ready, you know, not really ready to make that jump until they're sure that the market's going to be there. Yeah, I'll move on, but we'll touch on that again here in a few minutes. That's when we talk about uh, operating systems. So, and then, and then uh, on to the next bullet point there, the new tablet computer introductions really have exploded since the iPad was introduced. I mean, you just look at the number of, I mean, almost all major consumer electronics companies that have introduced some sort of tablet uh, since the iPad was introduced. Because so, the iPad seemed to have opened up the eyes of the market, you know, the user community and, 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 and saying, hey, this really is... Uh, a cool technology that ha that ha can have a lot of functionality, um, and, and you look at the market over the past two years since the iPad was introduced, and there's just a, a ton of stuff out there at price points that we really have never seen before the iPad came on the scene. Um, you can you can get a 
Windows based tablet um, for outdoor use, not rugged, but for outdoor use, you know, for well under a thousand bucks these days. Um, so it's been fascinating to watch this transformation. And, and you know, and, and tablets are, you know, interesting technology, you know, for, for, for GIS users. Having that big display area really, there's a, there's a lot of benefit there as long as it's uh, readable out in the sunlight. And then the next bullet point, you know, consumer PDAs, like we sort of talked about before, you know, 10 years ago, those were sort of the, the, the cat's pajamas. Uh, you know, the, you had the, the compact iPack was out, or the HP iPack. Um, all these, you know, non-phone digital, personal digital assistants, 